Happy birthday, Thetford Academy. Good evening. I'm Bill Bug, head of school at Thetford Academy. It's been my and my family's privilege to be a part of this wonderful community of Thetford Academy, Thetford and the Upper Valley for nearly seven years. As we begin, just a few words about tonight's program. It certainly takes a village to put together a gala. There are so many thank yous to say that listing them all risks the possibility of leaving someone out. Please see your program insert for lists of our volunteers who have helped make this event possible. If you know of a name that has been left out, please let me know after this part of our program, and we would love to be able to, to acknowledge that person and also get a correction of the program for our archives. I especially want to call out Cameron Cuddy, president of the Board of Trustees from 2013 to 2018, parent of one alum, Taylor, and also a uh, parent of a member of the Bicentennial Class of 2019, Aiden, as well as his wife, Lisa. Cameron has played a crucial role chairing the gala organization committee, making the historical film that you'll see in a minute happen, and being the liaison with a number of our helpers and vendors tonight. He has also, at the same time, chaired this year's Bicentennial Speakers Series. Cameron, will you please rise and be recognized? Where's Cameron? There he is, right over here. It's now my privilege to introduce Anne Bumpus, professor of philosophy at Dartmouth College, mother of Zia Smith, class of 21, and the president of the Thetford Academy Board of Trustees. Anne. Good evening, friends of Thetford Academy. It's my privilege to welcome you on behalf of the Board of Trustees to our Bicentennial Gala. Everyone here tonight knows TA well. You were or are students here, or parents or grandparents of students or graduates. You are or were teachers or staff members or administration here or members of the Board of Trustees. Or you are community members associated with the school through friends or family. Whoever you are, you have touched TA and been touched by the school in some meaningful way. No matter how well you know Thetford Academy, you will learn more about it tonight. You'll see pictures and hear stories about Thetford Academy you've never seen or heard before. You'll be treated to the premiere showing of a film on TA's history as seen through its five principal values, excellence, commitment, cooperation, caring, diversity. You'll hear inspirational keynotes, first from TA legendary head of school, Martha Rich, and then from social studies teacher and alum, Stacy Barton. You'll enjoy hearing music from our stage band and chorus, and you'll even have the opportunity to sing not one, but both of TA's two beloved school songs. You'll partake in a gourmet meal prepared by TA teacher and alum, Casey Hewling, uh, along with his students and helpers. And you'll be treated to desserts created by Jennifer Gerenhardt's middle school cooking class. After dinner, if you're in the mood, we hope you'll stay for dancing and more music. 200 years is an incredible milestone. We're glad you're here to celebrate. May the next 200 years be as amazing as the first. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. It's now our privilege to show you the premiere showing of the film Thetford Academy in Action, written, edited, produced, and narrated by Jackson Cashman, Dartmouth College class of 2021. He's a film major from Orlando, Florida, and Cameron Cuddy uh, has worked with him through the production of this really wonderful film. 
Enjoy. That was done by a college undergraduate. That's pretty impressive. It's now my great honor to introduce Martha Jane Rich. As you all know, Martha was head of school at Thetford Academy from 1991 to 2010 and stayed, on a, stayed here on a part-time basis in the role of associate head until 2012. The first woman to lead the academy, she was named Vermont Arts Education Advocate of the Year in 2006 and Principal of the Year in 2008. With her husband, David Kelman, who's also here tonight, she is also the proud parent of three TA alumni. She considers her chance to be the Academy's, quote, head learner for two decades, the most engaging, challenging, and rewarding work of her life. And now, please welcome Martha Jane Rich. I figured you might be able to put off um, your dinner a little longer, a little better if you had something to look at in addition to me, instead of me while I'm speaking. There we go. Thank you. We're here to celebrate two centuries of educational history designed for this community. And that will be my focus. First, though, I'd like to acknowledge the people who were here before the founders, before their ancestors, those people who were already in this place when those pioneering settlers arrived in 1761. Those people who had been here for centuries. We acknowledge the Abenaki, the people of the Dawn Land. Human history in this place, next to the Long River, began with them. Now, I'm going to pose a question. And I'm going to ask you to think about it and write your response. If you look on the table, you should find some pens and little pieces of paper. There's a mug there. All right, now, please imagine that you're talking with someone who's unfamiliar with Thetford Academy, unlike yourself. Someone who's just learning about it. What's the question that that person is most likely to ask. And don't say it, please write it. Okay, what do you think the most frequently asked question about Thetford Academy might be? But we'll collect those answers and find out what you said. For now, I'm gonna tell you the question I heard most often in my two decades at the school. So, is it a public school or a private school? How many, how many of you had a question like that? Yeah, okay, all right. And the correct answer is yes, both. That's it. All right. There is a more elegant way to put this, and the school's current tagline description attests to it. Thetford Academy is an independent school with a public purpose. We're gathered here tonight to celebrate that idea, an independent school with a public purpose. And if we want to understand what that means now, we need to go back to the beginning and see what it meant to the founders. 
independent. That term has several meanings, and they shifted over the Academy's first century. For those early pioneers coming to a new territory to carve out their homesteads in the forest, it meant self-reliant. You built your own shelter, grew your own food, you hunted and fished and raised your own livestock, you made your own clothes. By 1819, the town had been established for over 50 years, but it was still a small, remote place. The founders were used to being self-sufficient and resourceful. Independence had another meaning for them, too. It meant self-governing. Even before the Revolutionary War that established a new nation, Vermont was literally its own independent republic with some radical ideas about democracy. Vermont was first to declare that the right to vote was not just for men who owned property, land, but for every free man, whether he held property or not. Vermont also made sure that no one would be property here. Its constitution was the first to abolish slavery. And this was also the first state to establish free public education, requiring that every town have at least one schoolhouse, its own primary school. Thetford had these kinds of schoolhouses, the kind for the three R's, from its earliest years. Children were not required to go. That law came later. But they could, and they did. And that brings us to a third meaning of independence, the one that's most common today when we're talking about schools. In this sense, independent means separate from a government-mandated plan for education. It means exempt or alternative, private rather than public. In 1819, for education that was beyond the primary level, independent was the only option. There was no state requirement for secondary level high schools, what they called advanced education in academies or seminaries. If the people of Thetford wanted advanced education, they would need to be self-reliant, self-governing, and make their own academy. We know they did care. We know that the Reverend Dr. Asa Burton who'd been the minister at Thetford Hill Church since the middle of the Revolutionary War, therefore an influential citizen. He used his prominent voice to urge Thetford citizens to do something. And his sermon on the subject sounds to us now as if he was a neuroscientist before his time. He said, consider that the mind is capable of an endless growth. And we know now that that's literally true. Recent research has discovered that the brain is remarkably plastic with the ability to keep changing and adapting. The process of learning literally shapes it. And Dr. Burton elaborated on this idea. He said, consider what it means to neglect its growth. So he gave both a warning and a vision. There were other visionary educators in the area at the time. Kimball Union Academy over in New Hampshire was established by local church societies to train young men for the ministry. And a few from Thetford enrolled. And you know the story that the Thetford lawyer, Simeon Short, traveled over to KUA to deliver the contribution from the Thetford congregation. And since it was a day-long trip on horseback, he had plenty of time to think that it might be good to have a school nearer in his own town. 
Meanwhile, there was a West Point graduate in uh, Norwich named Mr. Partridge, Alden Partridge, and he established a literary, scientific, and military academy that was primarily for wealthy young men. No one from Thetford enrolled there at the beginning. In Thetford, the educational intention was different, and it was, as later descriptions emphasized, a school for students of modest means. Although religious and moral instruction were really important at Thetford Academy in the early years, and there was a fee, this school was not founded to promote a singular sectarian creed, and it was not the singular vision of one person. If you're a TA grammar hawk, which I am, you know that the title of the annual winter celebration contains a plural possessive. Right? That punctuation indicates a group of founders. Something like this. This photograph actually shows the trustees of the year 1950 in a reenactment that they did on the steps of their newly completed white building, but dressing as the founders. Now, Dr. Burton may have been the most eloquent advocate in this group, but the founders included a tavern keeper, the postmaster, merchants, town officials, doctors, and someone described as a benevolent farmer. The leading historian of the Academy's first century, Mary B. Slade, wrote that with a group like this, diverse for its day, it was plain that at its opening, the school was designed for the community. That community included girls. Dr. Burton's daughters among them. So Mrs. Slade found that it was not surprising that girls were admitted to the Thetford School from the beginning, designed for the community. In other words, a school with a public purpose. The founders were certainly shaped by their experience of independence as self-reliant, self-governing people, but there was another equally powerful force at work in their lives. Surviving and thriving in the new country also required interdependence, shared purpose, a sense of community responsibility. And that spirit was manifest in descriptions of the actual building of the school. There was much enthusiasm in carrying forward the enterprise. Notice the two entrance doors, a staircase for boys and a staircase for girls. TA historian Kermit Cook felt that as construction began, it's safe to guess that practically every family in town was represented and probably many from the surrounding areas. As one of the original trustees said, looking back after 75 years, by all our citizens, they were considered proud days for our little village. When a new century began 80 years later, the little village and its academy had been through a lot, but they were still there. They were ready for a new legal relationship that both underscored and expanded the founders' intention. Here's the graduating class of 1906. In that year, Vermont passed a law requiring towns to provide advanced instruction for all students. Towns could either establish new high schools or support students to attend existing ones. 
That second option created a unique New England hybrid called a town academy, a school that maintains internal self-governance, but is chosen by vote of the town and is approved by the state as a form of free, publicly supported education. In its second century then, Thetford Academy remained independent but became open to all, responsive to the community in a new way, and most important, responsible for educating the full range of students that community chose to send. Today, the public mission is clearly stated. I'll just read it. <laughs> celebrating, you could probably recite it with me, celebrating the unique worth of all students, nurturing their strengths, and challenging them to fulfill their potential. So over the years, since 1907, other nearby towns have joined Thetford in choosing designation agreements. And the agreements have been questioned and challenged repeatedly. Some partnerships have stayed steady, Stratford and Lyme, along with Thetford, um, especially, I think. Others have dissolved, and new connections have formed. This happens particularly at times when the public school districts are reconfiguring themselves. Through it all, the Town Academy model, the dual commitment to independence and public purpose, has persisted here and across northern New England. In the nation as a whole, I think a different kind of challenge has arisen lately, one that pits independence and public purpose against each other. The activist philosopher Cornel West says, public education is predicated on the notion that you're concerned about other people's kids just as much as your own kids. Working against this idea, there's a movement to privatize education under the banner of choice, fostering specialized or exclusive or corporatized options rather than a public commitment to quality education for everyone. Public purpose, as one of my favorite writers about education, Deborah Meyer puts it, means creating a sense of collective ownership to support a vision of schools in which constituents learn the art of living together. That experience, going to school with everyone and learning to live and learn in a community is a foundational experience in a democracy. And it's the core of Thetford Academy's purpose today. Oh look, there's the mission, there we go. <laughs> It might seem odd to an outsider, maybe to that person asking that frequently asked query, it might seem odd for an independent school to embody and defend a public mission so strongly. But we know from our history that even the independence is rooted in a sense of service to the community. As a former trustee said about one reason he volunteered for the TA board, it provides a sense of small town Vermont democracy where important decisions are made by those most vested. Another trustee says, we value growing and tending. At Thetford Academy, Trustees have the pleasure of stewarding a school in which kindness and individuality are the seeds of self-discovery 
and learning. I believe Asa Burton would agree. If he were among us today, he would feel that his charge to local citizens is still heard and heeded, still taken seriously after two centuries, and still celebrated. We know that all the young people of today hold our future in their hands. So this evening, we can take our cue from the account of that original schoolhouse raising party when, according to tradition, a Mesa Bond yoked his oxen at two in the morning so that he would be the first one there hauling a piece of timber to lay as the sill for the academy building, the new school. And then, as Kermit Cook wrote, there would be a large gathering of people in a gala mood who unitedly would hold their breath as each section slid into place. And then fun and some carousing would break forth. I hereby invite you to emulate that historic day 200 years ago. We have a big banquet in store, so let some carousing break forth. Thank you. We're now going to move to our second and final keynote address. Stacy Barton. Stacy Thurston Barton grew up in Post Mills, graduated from Thetford Academy in 1999. After receiving her BA in economics from Colby College in 1999, Stacy received her MED at Northeastern University before returning to TA to teach social studies in 2010. Stacy lives in East Thetford with her husband, Brock, and their two sons, Benjamin, who is in the TA, he will eventually be in the TA class of 2029, and Clark, who will eventually be in the TA class of, get this, 2031. She is proud to be an alumna, working in a place that I love with students who are diverse, caring, and wonderful. Without further ado, let's welcome Stacy Barton. Good evening. I am both honored and humbled to be here before you tonight. Before I begin, I would like to thank everyone who made this night happen. It took many hands to make this celebration come together, and everything has been wonderful. Special thanks to fellow alum Casey Hewling and his crew for a terrific dinner. Also, a big thank you to my former classmate and member of the class of 1999, Nick Stryker, for creating an amazing atmosphere here tonight. Like Casey and Nick, as an alumna, I have a deep admiration for Thetford Academy, and I'm delighted to be here tonight to celebrate its 200th birthday. I would like to dedicate this address to my grandfather, who very recently passed away. He and my grandmother, who attended TA, proudly saw all six of their children graduate from Thetford Academy. <clears throat> my grandparents then watched all of their grandchildren enroll here to graduate from this incredible school. My grandfather is very special to me and I hope he would be proud of me here tonight. I was asked to speak about Thetford Academy's past, present, and future. I have thought about this a great deal over the past several months, 
and decided that while I could talk about what I'm most comfortable presenting, facts and figures, or history and statistics, I will instead speak from my heart, because this place deserves that demonstration of devotion. The fact is, I am not uniquely qualified to give this address. There are innumerable people in the Upper Valley and beyond who share the same admiration, dedication, and allegiance to this place that we can always come home to. There are so many people who belong to this family that we call Thetford Academy. In life, I believe there is nothing greater or more important than family. That I learned from the values instilled in me by my parents and grandparents. But sometimes, I believe that family can extend beyond those in your genetic tree. Your family can include those who nurture you, care for you, who help you grow and broaden your understanding. A family can challenge you and lets you take risks and supports you if you succeed or fail. And your family always lets you come back home. And just like any family, the people at Thetford Academy share a special bond. It is a place where you feel loved and can go out in the world and try new things. Sometimes you stay out there and you make incredible marks on the world. But sometimes you come home and those feelings of familiarity, a sense of belonging and love, come flowing back like you never left. 200 years ago, our ancestors committed themselves to creating a school that would be a superior institution of learning. From the start, they made the values of acceptance and equality clear by allowing both young men and women attend Thetford Academy. More values that we cherish today continue to be fostered over the next several decades. Commitment, dedication, and loyalty were required to maintain the school during the lean years of many wars, and most of all, after the fire that took the original school building. During these times, faculty, students, and the community came together, cooperating to not only allow students to achieve an excellent education, but to also cultivate a deep sense of belonging. These people, the generations before us who planted the seeds for the incredible place we have today, cared deeply about the success and life of the school. Today, we are met with different challenges than our ancestors faced before us. As a teacher, it is clear to see that education is changing. On top of that, demographics are changing. Students are more diverse now than they have ever been before, affording the school with a myriad of opportunities, but putting pressure on limited financial resources. Regardless of these circumstances, however, my faith in Thetford Academy will never waver. You do not give up on family, and I will never give up on this place. Through the core fundamentals of excellence, cooperation, commitment, diversity, and caring, Thetford Academy will always rise above any challenge put before it. It is our paramount responsibility to follow in the footsteps of our ancestors to carry these values, traditions, and love for the school forward for the benefit of posterity. I hope the generations that came before us are proud of these 200 years and all that our wonderful school has accomplished and become. I also hope their vision of what Thetford Academy could be continues to be realized every single day on this beautiful campus. When future generations of graduates look back on their time here, I hope they feel the rich sense of community and love that will always be here to support them. When Thetford Academy's 300th birthday is celebrated, I hope the students look back with pride on their ancestors' commitment to make this school the best it can be for everyone and feel empowered 
to continue the traditions of the family. Thank you, and cheers to Thetford Academy. We are now going to sing, Thetford, we revere thee. Please rise and let's all sing it together and the words are on the screens and also in your program on the second to last page. up on the screen uh, a really impressive scene from yesterday afternoon at 12 o'clock. Ready? Right there on Academy Road at 12 noon yesterday came to fruition a project that has taken many, many years to put together. Thanks to the hard work of many people in the Thetford Academy Alumni Association, the Thetford Historical Society, especially with Martha Howard and our own Steve Niederhauser right over here, and also um, the, the assistance of Thetford Academy and the family of Nancy and David Lindahl, whose yard this sign lies in. This is, a, this is the town of Thetford's first Vermont Historical Marker. <laughs> Yesterday at noon, Martha Rich was the MC and guided us through a beautiful presentation. We heard from Marshall Van Norden, representing the Alumni Association. We heard from, Marshall was representing the, the Historical Society. We heard from Frank Bennett right over here, representing the Alumni Association, and I spoke briefly on behalf of Thetford Academy. And the coolest thing of this whole event was that Virginia Anderson Barrett, who, as you probably know, is the daughter of Carl Anderson, who pulled Thetford Academy literally out of the ashes and rebirthed it right here on the other side of the street after the fire of 1942. So Virginia Anderson Barrett is Carl Anderson's daughter 
and, he, and she married Rule Barrett, who was the head of school directly after Carl Anderson uh, for, for a, a good number of years. And Jenny Barrett was on, on hand yesterday to pull off the cloth covering the historical marker. For those of you who aren't as familiar with Thetford Academy's past, the original campus was across the street from the current campus and about halfway down the street towards Highway 113, uh, not quite to the green, not quite to Open Field School. And on the property of David and, and Nancy Lindahl, during the drought in June, you could see the original foundation lines burned into the grass. And you could also find, Nancy showed me, that if you dug your foot into the grass a bit, the corners are still marked in that original building. It's really impressive. So the next time you drive down Academy Road, this sign is prominently displayed. Take a moment and read it. It tells the story of Thetford Academy in how many characters, Martha? I don't remember, 800 and something characters. It was an incredible process to get that going. I'm really, really proud of our school and really grateful to the three entities that helped make this possible. So um, one other thing I'd like to note at the same time is that Rule Barrett passed away just over a year ago. He was a legendary head of school. He lived across the street from Slafter Hall, where Sally and my wife and my boys live, and where Martha lived for many years, Martha and David. Um, but he passed away um, after, after kind of a, a long period of, of uh, uh, not being able to walk around as much as he had, had once hoped to. When I came here, I knew him from riding the lawnmower around the, 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 uh, the, the grass in not only his yard, but other people's yards too. What a wonderful gentleman he was. I have a couple of things to say briefly about the bicentennial and what's coming next this year. Um, under the wonderful leadership of Alan Berelsheimer, it, with the help of a, of a great committee of people, including Martha and uh, Joe Daphner, Patty McElvain, and a number of other people, we have been working on a uh, bicentennial book. Um, this book is expected to be ready, we hope, by graduation time. It's a combination uh, pictorial book and, and history of the last 100 years, plus a summary of the history of the earlier part of the school. Um, it will be a beautiful book, and we'll, give, we'll make sure you know how to order it so that you can have a copy. That'll be coming up soon. Earlier, I alluded to a bicentennial speaker series. We've had some fabulous speakers so far this year. Uh, we've heard from uh, people talking about such subjects as Martin Luther King Jr. on MLK Day. Uh, just a couple of days ago, we heard from Mark Breen with a, a, a really amazing talk on Pluto and the beyond, the planets beyond. And on Monday, the day after tomorrow, we are really pleased to feature a, a, a speaker for our series, um, well known in Vermont. Um, he is the CEO of Vermont Public Radio, um, and his name is Scott Finn. That talk is going to be at 5.30, it's an unusual time, 5.30 in the afternoon in the Martha Jane Rich Theater, which is in the Old Chum, and we hope you can be there. Um, the final thing that I'd like to say before I turn over the baton to Ann Bumpus is that during this bicentennial year, we have had a uh, year-long program that will continue into the next two years called 200 for 200. Our hope is that over a three-year period, we will raise $200,000 for our 200th birthday. That's why it's called 200 for 200. There's information about the, um, this, this small campaign on our website. We hope you'll take a look there and support it as generously as you can. Uh, we're really looking for two or three year pledges so you have the opportunity to spread out your gift over a period of time. Um, so again, thank you so much for coming, but before you go and enjoy the uh, music and whatever 
um, the, the desserts, whatever leftover food we can find. Um, I would uh, like to call up Ann Bumpus for a special announcement. Most of you know that while we have much to celebrate, we also are facing a bittersweet transition. Last spring, head of school Bill Bug announced he would be leaving TA at the end of the 2019 academic year. This summer, he and his family will relocate to the U.S. Virgin Islands, where he will become head of school at the Good Hope Country Day School in St. Croix. So in June, we will say goodbye to this remarkably dedicated head of school, to whom Thetford Academy owes a great, great deal. Please join me in thanking Bill Bug. I think many of you know the other part of my announcement, so I'll keep it brief, but um, in July, Carrie Brennan will become TA's next head of school. She was selected from a large pool of truly outstanding candidates. Um, she is no stranger to our area. She and her husband are Dartmouth graduates and both did their student teaching in the Upper Valley. In fact, Carrie is a former student of Martha Rich's. Um, Brennan is currently the executive director and co-founder of City Center for Collaborative Learning in Tucson. And in Arizona, um, she has been recognized repeatedly for her contributions as an innovative educator and community leader. Um, her experience and values will make her a fantastic choice to lead TA into its next 200 years. Thank you and good evening.